Once you have completed your comments, staff will mute your microphone. Everyone shall be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard at this meeting. No one will be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making their views heard. Uh, sorry, I uh, had YouTube on and I heard myself, so I will continue. <laughs> Everyone uh, who wishes to speak has done so. I will call for the speakers for a second time, at which time those who wish to speak again should indicate so by using the raise hand function. Speakers will again have five minutes to provide their views. I will then call for speakers for a third and final time. If there are no further speakers, I will ask for a motion to close the public hearing. In order to preserve the integrity of the public hearing process, following the close of the public meeting, Council may not receive any more correspondence or representation, written or verbal, regarding the bylaw. The public was also given the opportunity to provide written submissions for this public hearing. All submissions will be retained by the corporate officer and copies of the submissions will be available from her on request following the hearing and shall form part of the public record of these proceedings. Ms. Kenny, can you please advise how notification was provided for this public hearing and whether we have received any correspondence? Yes, Mayor Pahal, two newspaper advertisements for this bylaw were placed in the November 24th and December 1st editions of the Langley Advanced Times and notices were mailed out to the owners within 100 meters of the subject properties. Notice of the public hearing was also placed on the city's website and on the posting board of the first floor of City Hall. We received two pieces of correspondence and they were received after publication of the agenda and so have been circulated to council via email. Thank you very much, Ms. Kenny. So now we'll move on to bylaw 3221 zoning amendment number 190 RZ04-22 and development permit DP07-22. Mr. Johansson, can you please provide an overview of the purpose of the bylaw number 3211? Good evening, Mayor and Council and uh, members of the audience. The subject properties are zoned RS1 single family residential in the zoning bylaw and designated low-rise residential in the official community plan or OCP. This land use allows multifamily apartment development to a maximum building height of six stories and a maximum density of 2.1 floor area ratio or FAR. The density of the proposed development complies with the OCP but exceeds the RM3 parameters in the current zoning bylaw. So a comprehensive development zone or a CD zone is necessary to accommodate the applicant's proposed rezoning of the site. The applicant is also proposing variances for visitor parking and accessible parking stall length, as well as proposing reduced resident parking. Further e details and rationale for the proposed variances are included in the staff report. And I believe the applicant is in the audience who can speak to their proposal. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. At this time, I would now like to invite the applicant to speak on the proposed bylaw. Mr. Adab. Thank you very much. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Fred Adab. I'm the architect of the project. And uh, uh, the developer team and uh, landscape architect is also present. After I speak about the project, Rod will speak about landscaping issues. If there's any question with developers, they are both present. This slide shows the location of the uh, property in here with pink. As you can see, all the surrounding areas and lots or sites are uh, designated to be 
to either be uh, in the is either built or in the process of getting permit or future uh, developments, but they're all four to six story. That's six story. This is five story, six story, uh, five story, six story is our site, and the property next door is also going to be developed with six story building. Our site has frontage on 253A and also a connection to the 53A Avenue and 200A Avenue through an existing cul de sac that will be removed and these two streets or these two roads will be connected in the future. This is the site plan. The only reason I'm showing the site plan is to show this location. And this location, as I indicated, there is a, a cul-de-sac at the moment. There is no connection between 53 and 200A. And now with the 90 degree angle, they're connected. And our site, uh, vehicle entry and loading and uh, are through this, and this will be an access to the site on the north. This is our site plan and the site plan. Uh, so we go back to the access uh, from the 53A goes down. This area is almost flat. It is flat. And there is a loading bay in here. And this loading bay has a direct connection to the wider corridor here to elevator for moving in and out. Uh, and there is a transformer here uh, on our property. And this location has been verified by BC Hydro. What you see here in dark gray color is a five meter existing sanitary, uh, which uh, we are not touching it. And uh, next to it in area, there is a, uh, I understand above this could be, uh, could be grass or uh, that's the, on the landscape architect probably will talk about that. From here, we go to underground parking. We have two levels of underground parking. The main entry to the building is from 53A. We have an accessible ramp in here and steps going up. So the, the, the main floor is on a, a sort of podium about five feet, four to five feet high, depending on the grade elevations from the, uh, from the street and uh, every unit at ground floor has a patio and direct access uh, through these steps to the street. And uh, there is an access also from the 200th street uh, with a, a, a very, well, three-pencil slope going to the east and coming in here. And this is the connection between the rear of the property and 200 or between the indoor amenity and 200 and the units facing north as well. They have patios, private patios and access from this walkway. Uh, <clears throat> although the, 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 the main floor or, or first floor is raised five foot from the floor, but is stepped down by uh, planters here. So we have a one patio level with the floor, floor grade and then the second patio and patio. So it's broken down the, uh, the patio. This is a, a six visit, visitors bicycle rack. Uh, and these are the exits uh, out here and out to 200th Street. This is a uh, third floor, which is our typical floor. And uh, uh, I'm sure you realize that it's a very, very challenging site to design because it faces two street and is irregular shape and sort of also faces 53A. And uh, we have developed uh, an L shape footprint which responds to the, uh, to the lot configuration and lot area. So this is typical floor plans and uh, the corner units are larger uh, and uh, this floor goes up, up to sixth floor. And then on the sixth floor, uh, this is the sixth floor. We have a, a setback along the two streets and you can see how this setback plays a major role on the elevation and facade of the building. 
and vocabulary that we were trying to introduce. These two units are three bedroom units with a very larger deck. And this uh, dashed line is the line of the overhang and these posts are for to hold that overhang. So uh, these are larger units, three bedroom uh, facing uh, two large decks at this corner. And we specifically cut this corner and that corner again from architectural point of view that I'll explain a bit later. This is a roof plan. Uh, I don't talk about really if, uh, type of vegetation, but this roof is accessible by stair here. And uh, we have uh, two hose beams in these two location. And we have these pavers, stepping uh, pavers for, uh, for maintenance. The roof is sedum and doesn't need really maintenance, but in case if Strato wants to change the dead plants or replace or whatever, we have access, we have hose beeps, and it's quite um, uh, easily maintained. So this is the um, uh, corner of 253A, and you can see the building has presence in both streets here, we have these balconies and windows to our 200th street. And uh, we have an acoustic report for these units and these corner units, and we'll comply with that acoustic report in terms of sound. Uh, uh, and then the main entry to the building is from 53A here, and we have brick up to the fifth floor, and that's the setback that I was uh, explaining the floor plan that uh, gives a character to the facade of the building. That's uh, another view from other side from 53A uh, from east looking to the west. Again, that uh, setback turns and turns here and that's that large deck I was talking about it. Uh, the corner in both sides are uh, spandrel and glass to give it a a, a different and contrasting character. Uh, this is a bird eye view from the neighboring property here. And that's a school on the other side. And uh, again, this facing 200 and uh, this is the walkway we were talking about. In the park. These are the two facades. Uh, I will explain about the material in another uh, slide. These are the side elevations, east and west. Uh, we, have, we have really used uh, uh, the material that we have, which is uh, brick, uh, siding, and hardy panel in every facade uh, uh, equally. So we haven't really given any uh, priority to one facade or another. And this is the material board. And this is our color palette. This is the color of the brick, uh, which we have here. And we have two type of hardy panel. One is off white and one is uh, 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 gray. Uh, and uh, there is a contrast between these two for sure. The fascia board is black uh, and aluminum windows are black and railings are black and architectural concrete that are really not visible because of landscaping. And because the fact that I said that the planters are stepped down and uh, we have, uh, we don't see any really high concrete wall along the street anywhere because we have two tiers of planters, but this is the architectural concrete. And uh, the soffits uh, from the balcony are wood soffit, wood color, aluminum perforated. This is the section of the building, and uh, uh, these are from the from the road. I forgot to say that there are three meter dedication along the 53A and two and a half meter dedication along uh, 200 Street, and uh, and corner cut at the 253. And this, this shows the 
setback I was talking about. Uh, I have been told to keep it short and I'm trying for the first time to be quick and on time. So this is another section and uh, this is our property line. These are setbacks. Uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, design approach, we comply with the new OCP in terms of parking ratio, visitor parking ratio, and uh, the density. So basically, considering the revised new OCP, we comply with it uh, exactly. Uh, uh, the unit mix, we have 84 units in total. And uh, uh, these 84 units, uh, uh, there is one studio, eight one bedroom, uh, 36 one bedroom and then, and 34 two bedroom and five three bedroom. So in terms of uh, unit mixes, in terms of uh, product that can be available for, uh, for all sort of uh, demands and purchases, uh, the studio and one bedrooms are small, are attainable. Uh, the three bedrooms are of course larger, but for, uh, for uh, single people, for uh, married with no children, for married with children, with married with many children, we have everything for you. And then 20% of the units are designed with uh, adaptable, being adaptable, so you can easily make them accessible units in, in case. Uh, the parkings we have, uh, we have, uh, I think eight, ten percent of the parkings are are EV chargers, and uh, whoever wants to buy those spots in the parking uh, will pay forty dollar per month to the strata for using those um, EV chargers, and uh, the. There was a slide, I don't know what happened to it about, uh, sorry, go back about, oh yeah, here. We have taken into account really uh, sustainable green measures. Uh, first of all, we are lucky with the location. We are within walking, cycling, uh, uh, and public transit is all there. And, uh, uh, we have, I have some figures here with 10 minutes walking distance to downtown, two minutes walking distance to elementary school, 10 minutes walking distance to team center, five minutes walking distance to Linwood and Brighton Park. And there are four buses running through 253 A Avenue. So we have been very lucky in that uh, terms. Uh, uh, now, in terms of uh, air conditioning and heating system, we have HRV heat recovery ventilation in every unit, and the heating is provided by baseboards, and the cooling is provided by AC system installed under the windows and they have one vent to outside. So uh, it's either to outside or into the balcony, depending where we have a solid wall. Uh, before we had a couple of units that we didn't have a solid wall and we wanted to uh, provide, uh, not through opening the sliding doors, no, but within the sliding doors, an area the window company will build it, but that's gone now. So every building has a AC unit. Uh, I will be suggesting to developers to have on the on the sixth floor, which we have large decks, to have a actual a heat pump condensing unit on the balcony. So that gives you hot and cold for the larger units. Uh, 
Okay, so we go back to our sustainability measures. We talked about distances, housing diversity and choices. I mentioned about type of accommodation we are provided. The roof provides reduces solar intensity, EV charges, adaptable units, as I mentioned, 20%. And our material are all recyclable material. We have deep bulk units for all the units and large patches at the ground floor, indoor and outdoor amenities. Uh, we have a store management uh, provision, which there will be a tank on the, on the ramp. There was a ramp on the access from the lane. So the water goes there, then from there gets discharged. And we have permeable pavers. Uh, those stairs that were in the plan, they have direct access to underground level. So necessarily you don't have to use the elevator, you can walk uh, up. And we have energy efficient bus and light fixture and we comply with the energy code. So I'm done now, uh, Rod can take over. I stop sharing. Hello, everybody. Um, can you see this? Yep. Yes. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> I'll quickly go through the landscape. This drawing, <clears throat> the drawing number one, basically shows um, all the landscaping that's in on the project and on on the offsite. So maybe starting at the bottom here, 53rd Avenue, we have um, a streetscape with a boulevard with lawn and street trees. And along 200th, we have uh, a little bit more narrow strip of lawn, but with a wider um, asphalt uh, bike path, the walkway. Um, and as uh, Fred has mentioned, main entrance is here, steps coming up. We have uh, basically the, um, wheelchair ramp up um, all these units are are paved with uh, two by two unit pavers uh, heavily planted along the perimeter of this and again here's the terrace planters uh, lots of planting all the way around and this uh, right of way at the back we are planting shrubs on it um, just to give it a, a nice buffer for the adjacent uh, property and again, here's the, uh, this is the uh, outdoor patio. We have a long walkway that's, it's, it's kind of like a, uh, a slope with some landings that take you straight up, up from the street up to this uh, outdoor patio. And then the back, of course, this is the entrance coming in. And you can see we've got trees planted along the perimeter and then small trees um, throughout, the, throughout the project here. Um, this this uh, image here uh, portrays the front of the building in, in a little bit more detail. So now you got you get to see a little bit more of the the planting that we've got around the front. You can see the stairs coming up, um, entrance area, bike bike uh, parking, all the way through large patios uh, with uh, unit pave pavement. This drawing here um, is intended to show the landscape lighting. Um, it's a little hard to see for everybody, but we have symbols on here that show the different type of light uh, fixtures throughout the site. So this is a fully landscaped, uh, a fully lit landscape with lighting uh, in the form of light, uh, like bollards or uh, wall lights or um, up lights uh, throughout throughout. Uh, throughout the um, the site. Okay. This drawing here is uh, the roof. It's colored just to show you the extent of the green roof. Uh, we have a four foot wide uh, service access all the way around the building. And as Fred mentioned, we have the stepping pads, these little two by two pavers that allow uh, access throughout this area for site service. Um, and one of the comments before um, um, was about maintenance and this all of this landscape, including the ground level landscaping, uh, is will be covered by the strata uh, under a landscape uh, maintenance contract. Um, so they'll have somebody, they'll have a landscape contract uh, 
out with a maintenance company that uh, will come throughout the course of the year and undertake uh, maintenance duties to uh, check up on the landscaping. And if there's anything that has to be replaced, like if there are some trays that have perished, they will replace those. As Fred mentioned, we have um, a couple of water hose bibs to allow manual irrigation in the event that we have prolonged drought. And uh, if, the, if the plants get under stress, there is the opportunity to manually main, maintain this to, to keep the uh, longevity of the plants. This drawing uh, is a standard drawing that we have on most of our drawings, but they, they show in detail uh, some components of the landscape, for instance, the paving on grade, paving on slab, unit pavers. This is uh, an elevation of the fence that will be installed and uh, typical planting details um, just to, to ensure that um, everything is up to British Columbia BCSLA standards. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. And I believe that is the end of the applicant's presentations. Uh, I may get you to unshare your screen. Okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Ms. Cusack, can you please advise if there's anyone in attendance electronically at this meeting who wishes to speak to bylaw 3221? Thank you, Mayor Pahal. Currently, there are no members of the public in attendance. Thank you. I'll call for a second time for speakers on bylaw 3211. Or 3221, sorry. Thank you. No speakers. I'll call for a third and final time for speakers on bylaw 3221. And no speakers. Seeing no speakers, do any members of council have any questions regarding bylaw 3221? Let's please raise your hand. Uh, so we'll start with Councillor Soliam, and then we'll go to Councillor Wallace. Councillor Soliam. Hi there. Just uh, this is my first uh, time looking at, at the plans for a green roof. Can, can you get into a little bit more detail as to what would be planned to be uh, growing on there, and, and like what height they would be, or is it, is it just going to be uh, like veg vegetation, like vegetables or something? I'm not. I'm not 100 clear on this. The green roof is. Um... It's a low profile roof and uh, typically it is uh, um, planted with these trays. The trays are typically about maybe, for instance, maybe 14 inches square. And they're only about four to six inches in depth. You can buy them, you, we can order different depth, but it's a low profile planted with sedums, which are uh, drought tolerant. And they um, basically live on the roof. Uh, and it's basically just to give a cover uh, as in, insulative or um, a certain value for that. But they are not uh, your typical, uh, let's say, a shrub planting. So it's not intended to be planted with uh, shrub planting or anything like that. It's a low profile uh, green roof that covers the entire roof. Um, it's uh, um, planted with a minimal amount of uh, maintenance required. Uh, and as I was mentioning before, we do supply like uh, a hose bib uh, on each end of the on each end of the roof to to allow manual irrigation in case we encounter, let's say, really prolonged drought periods, and uh, some of the material may be under stress. So it allows the the, the landscape contractor to come up and actually bring up um, hoses and actually manually irrigate to keep keep the the uh, all, all the green roof uh, healthy and alive. So yeah, so it's it's basically a very narrow, very very uh, low profile landscape layer on top of the roof. Thank you, uh, Councillor Soliam. Did you have any further questions? Uh, not at this time. Thank you. We'll go to Councillor Wallace and Councillor Mack. Uh, thank you to the Mayor um, Pahal. Um, to uh um sorry mr maru yama i i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right but um mike kind of uh talked about or asked the question i was curious about the green roof and what the benefits um 
and the sustainability factor of it would be. And if um, there was ever any thought of putting um, a garden, you know, a, a, you know, to be able to grow food up there, just in a little piece of it, because it's covered in the entire roof is covered with a green roof. So um, I guess for me, like looking at um, the purpose of greening buildings, you know, um, sometimes it's to attract um, bees for pollination. Um, you know, we've talked about food security is, is, is top of mind as well. So, um, you know, that's a question of mine. And then if uh you retained any green that already existed any trees or um yeah so that those are my questions okay well for for the green roof um we um didn't program it other than uh basically a low profile green roof and um so uh we didn't we didn't actually have uh any program for for having uh, rooftop gardens and things like that. I think it may be problematic with um, uh, perhaps building code or uh, maybe Fred, you can speak up to it a bit, but we never we never um, explored that for let's say garden plots and things like that. I know lots of buildings have it, but uh, when you when you entertain that type of um, uh, landscape, you have to have considerably more weight on the roof because you need more soil. Uh, you have to build up uh, all the planters with a structure. Um, then you have to have a certain form of, um, you know, like accessibility. Uh, you need more um, additional area for, uh, let's say, uh, working space, um, just things like that for the public to use. So that uh, you know, we 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 just went forward with a standard green roof, and the green roof in terms of sustainability also it really uh, supports the idea of um, rainwater helping stormwater management because you, as you can tell, that whole area will be able to absorb moisture. And there's actually at the bottom of all these trays there is a little uh, reservoir where they can hold water, and the whole key to that is holding water. Uh, for prolonged periods before you dump dump the water into the city system. Thank you, Councillor Wallace. Did you have any further questions or comments? Um, no, I think that explains the sustainability, what you just mentioned about the collection of water. Um, in your plantings, I didn't see, I, I saw the trees and, and just uh, mm -hmm. further to that, just in the plantings of um, perennials or annuals, if there was the um, anything planted as far as uh, you know, the collect of you know the butterflies and the bees and and so on, right? Just as attracting. Yeah. yeah. So we we provided uh, numerous. There's a new. There's a, the, the plant palette is quite extensive, and and a lot of the plants are flowering. A lot of them are perennials. We have deciduous. We have coniferous trees, and all of these are all positive for um, uh, uh, habitation for let's say for insects, uh, bees, uh, birds. So it's all it all provides a nice uh, sort of a micro microecology for for this type of um, uh, condition, which is uh, I think in almost all landscapes it's very supportive of all this. Although there you know there are some plants that are that are actually more what do you call um, con conducive to uh, certain types of, um, uh, of of birds or things like that, and some of them produce. Uh, you know, like fruits and things like that. But you have to also understand that there is a, a conflict between some some things like this because of the mess. Like if we start planting nothing but fruiting uh, trees and uh, half of all, all the fruits become uh, a maintenance problem and it becomes a, it, you know, it just, uh, so there's, it has to be a happy medium. And I think most of what we've done with the landscaping supports what you're talking about. Thank you. Uh, any further comments? No, thank you very much. Thank you. And I believe Councillor Wallace asked if any existing trees on the site will be retained. Could you comment on that? Well, on this site, uh, I believe most of the trees are in conflict with uh, the development. So um, 
Uh, I would think most of them are coming out. And then there are trees that are on the periphery that uh, will be protected. Thank you. Councillor Mack. We're able to provide the rough price points. Um, how how much these are going to cost? I know you have like there's one bedrooms, there's two bedrooms, there's three bedrooms. Do you have any idea what the market price of, of these is going to roughly be? Uh, Fred, I think that's maybe directed to you. Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't have an answer for that. As you know, that the cost of construction is fluctuating a lot. And the market at this point of time is not, uh, uh, it doesn't have a, uh, you cannot really foresee the future. Uh, so I don't know whether a developer has consulted uh, real estate agents for this purpose, but it will be very difficult uh, to come up with a, a price range. In terms of cost of construction, I can give you an indication that it will be around $280 per square foot to construct hard construction costs and then 30% for soft costs. So it will be $310 per square foot hard and soft costs. Uh, but how much they would sell, I have no answer. Do you have any further questions, Councillor Mack? Uh, Please go ahead. Yes, through Mayor Pahal, back to Mr. Adab. Um, for the parking stalls, are they going to be uh, free for residents? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, yes, it will be one per unit free. So we will have 84 parking, uh, uh, 84 unit. So 84 parking will be sold part of the unit price. The rest of the parking, uh, obviously the units that are larger, uh, three bedrooms and large two bedrooms and then, uh, they will have, uh, uh, they need more parking. So for those, they will pay around 15 to $20,000 extra per parking. If there was any parking left that nobody was interested, it will be the developer's property and can rent, rent it out to those who are interested to rent parking. Thank you. Do you have any further questions, Councillor Mack? No further questions. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Albrecht, please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Pahal. And uh, through Mayor Pahal to the applicant, uh, I just want to recognize and, and thank you uh, for incorporating all the, um, uh, let's say, recommendations or requests from our advisory design panel. Uh, I think that's uh, a great way of uh, uh, having a project uh, be welcomed into our community. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, I also want to recommend that you try to use as much local goods and services as possible when you're in the construction process. Uh, help stimulate the local economy. Everyone needs a uh, a, ray, a lift up uh, these days. So I just wanted to put that plug in there. Uh, two questions I have for you, and then I have some for staff. Um, one is, uh, I didn't hear anything about a traffic uh, management plan or construction management plan. Uh, we always seem to get uh, a lot of feedback in neighborhoods where um, uh, the contractors or the tradespeople are using up a lot of the road uh, area for parking and uh, impacting them on a daily basis. So I'm just wondering about that as well as uh, is the plan to use electric heating? It may be a little early yet, but I just I'm trying to get get people to get away from the use of fossil fuels. So if you could answer those two questions and then I have something for staff. Uh, thank you very much. Uh... In terms of construction, uh, noise and management, uh, when it comes, we always do that for our, our project with City of Langley. We have issues to the building permit stage, there will be a meeting. In that meeting, we will come up with a plan. And uh, at that time, also the contractor has his, uh, the, his, his 
the, the developer has his contract tour in as well available. So we come up with a plan and uh, there will be definitely for a building of this size, uh, one person allocated to traffic management uh, and a couple of flag people around. Uh, so that will be definitely will be taken care of during the building permit process. Uh, sorry, what was your second question? Uh, I was asking about the heating, fossil fuel or electric? No, it is electric. Perfect. Thank you so much. And if I could, uh, Mayor Paul, I'd like to <clears throat> ask staff about um, uh, what is it again? Uh, the orphan lots to the north uh, can they be developed in a in a reasonable fashion, as well as uh, a pedestrian connection from 200A and 53A uh, to that uh, uh, the sidewalk that's being provided along the north side of the building. And then one last question for staff is the 200 Street uh, uh, sidewalk or pedestrian corridor is that asphalt or concrete? Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, through to Mayor Pahal to Councillor Albrecht. I think I can handle the first two, and I might defer the third one to engineering. Uh, the first one is that the when this application came in and there was discussion about uh, the redevelopment of uh, this area, which we, we call the elbow, just by the shape of it along 200th Street and, and 53rd, uh, we did take a really close look at it, and those properties to the north can be developed on their own uh, viably. The property is large enough. It's about 1,950 square feet. So that's larger than uh, the standard zone that has been used uh, in the city in the past for this scale of development. Uh, we are actually considering a, a slightly smaller lot size for our the new zoning bylaw. Uh, the properties would also be wide enough uh, to accommodate uh, an underground parking uh, garage that would be efficient and allow for access uh, to 53A. And I believe your second question was about a pedestrian connection between 53A and 200. Yeah, so that's something we also looked at. Um, it is possible to uh, look at uh, a pedestrian connection between 53A and 200 when those remaining properties are developed uh, in order to create a, a pathway along there. Uh, potentially with the realignment of that uh, sanitary sewer. But that's something that we're going to look at. Um, there is a greenway, as you can see in the, in the package, that is uh, planned to be put in just uh, a, a, another development over to the east uh, that would uh, provide another connection between 53A and 53, and then to a crosswalk that goes over uh, to Nickel Meckel Elementary. I hope that answers your two questions. And I see that our manager of engineering services has popped up here. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Johansson. Uh, it's just nice to know that we're considering all those different pieces. Thank you. Good evening, uh, through the mayor to Councillor Albrecht. The uh, sidewalk is going to be concrete. As with the, uh, whether it's going to be eventually here, we are going to have a mop or any other form of active transportation included. Is very early at this stage. Uh, we are not sure it's going to be mop during the design, offsite design. We will work with the consulting engineer that developer has. But uh, usually, in cases like this, it's going to be uh, in the interim, it's going to be landscape until the entire uh, segment is ready for a continuous kind of uh, bike lane. Then, most likely, we're going to go with a protected bike lane. But the sidewalk will be concrete. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure concrete's so much easier to for longer life and less maintenance. So thank you. Uh Councillor Solium. I believe you're on mute, Councillor. Through the uh mayor to the applicant. Uh I'm I'm a little bit new. I, I just got on to council and so this is a little bit uh a learning experience for me. Um, I'm just kind of curious what the, uh, the the reasoning is for uh, the mix of um, of apartment sizes that you guys uh, you guys have. So in terms of how many number of, uh, of three bedrooms that you have, 
And I was wondering whether you considered uh, that you are across the street from a school, whether that meant that you were uh, implementing more three bedroom than you normally would, or is it just a, a kind of a standard uh, amount that you have for, uh, for a given six story building or not? Thank you. Uh, I can answer that question. Uh, uh, basically, we are following the, the policy of diversity and providing as much as possible different type of accommodation for different users. Of course, the school is there and three bedrooms and two bedroom and dens uh, uh, can have children and using that school just across the road. Uh, but basically, uh, the policy now in every municipality is to provide larger units as well as smaller units. 10 years ago, it was all one bedroom, very little two bedroom and no three bedroom. But we are now in a different uh, era. And uh, so in terms of marketability, in terms of diversity, in terms of sustainability, I think the, the mix, uh, the mix of three, two, one and one bedroom and ten is it was intended and we do that for almost all of our projects did you have any further questions or comments i, I think i was just um yeah in terms of i'm trying to think about what the cost would be from your end to increase the number of three bedrooms and decrease the number of uh, one bedrooms if that's something that's viable at this stage of the game or whether it's um something to keep in mind for another project? The three bedrooms uh, um, is limited. The area that you put the three bedrooms are either at the corner of the, because they need more windows. So it's either at the corner of the building or on the top floor. And that's what we had. So if you put a three bedroom in the middle of a building, it will be a living, dining, two bedroom, and where the three bedroom is, so it will be three bedroom, very long, inefficient. And uh, so how much corner you have, you can accommodate more three bedrooms. And the location as well. I mean, if a project is in a uh, city of Langley or is in Vancouver or is in West Vancouver, the demand for three bedroom and uh, two bedroom is different. Um, we don't have a young population in West Vancouver, so mostly should be three bedroom, two, two bedroom, and then. And it's uh, it's a pity because city of district of West Vancouver is losing population every year, and they talk about it every year and still losing population every year. But the city of Langley, in the past, I've been working with city of Langley for thirty five years. Uh, uh, so it has gone a very, very long way. And now it has very good stock of different type of accommodation in terms of three bedroom, one bedroom, two bedroom. And now that your counselor, new counselor is the best municipality to work with in the whole Canada. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Solium. Any further comments from council? So I'm not seeing any. Uh, I just have a couple of questions. One to the applicant, Mr. Adab, I just wanted to make sure I heard you clearly. All the units will have functional air conditioning the day they open? Yes. That is great to hear. Uh, this is probably more directed to staff. Maybe it is due to the applicant. Given that it's a school across the street, is there a plan to have additional flaggers before and after school, just because I could imagine it getting pretty, um, a lot of diverse uses at that time of day? So maybe that's to, to staff? Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor Pahal. Um, yes, as we... Uh, if this project uh, is approved, it goes through building permit and to uh, construction phase as part of the pre-con, we'll, uh, we'll definitely uh, keep that in mind as part of the traffic planning and, and traffic management. 
and also looking at the trades parking. That was something that was mentioned earlier. Uh, the manager of engineering services may have further to comment on that, but we'll definitely keep that in mind uh, as we move forward in this. Thank you. Um, and oh yes, um, to the applicant, or was that uh, Mr. Gill? Please. No, nothing further. Actually, uh, uh, um, they covered everything. I was going to say the same thing, but it was covered. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gill. Uh, another question I have, uh, just for clarity, there are 53A and 200A are already connected. Um, I know Mr. Dab was talking about some road network changes. Could we get some more context on what the proposed road network changes are there? And maybe that's to, um, I don't know if that's to Mr. Johansson or Mr. Gill. I can show you the uh, let me just sh new share. Uh, I can see your screen, which is great on the sustainability and green measures. No, that's one. No, that's fine. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I believe um, the reference was to just how the the cul-de-sac um, is where fifty three a and two hundred a join right now. Yes. The idea there is to normalize that into a, oh. a, into a curve. Uh, again, that's something that uh, Mr. Gill might want to talk about, but it, it's basically what's shown in that image there. Maybe oh. I'll add it over. Okay. Yeah. So this is the is 90 degree mm. action here. This doesn't exist now, but uh, this will be provided to the civil drawings mm. of the city. Okay, so um, just, yeah, I, I know that neighborhood fairly well. So basically you're just removing the cul-de-sac. Yes. Perfect. Uh, and then just one final question. So with the um, sort of the crosswalk, there's, um, will we be maintaining the, I guess the north leg and the east leg of 200th Street and 53rd Avenue during construction. And I don't know if that is to maybe um, something for Mr. Johansson. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry, just uh, for clarity, are you asking if uh, um, certain frontages are open during construction? Yeah, so basically, well, the frontage at uh, on the northeast corner of 200th and 53rd be open during construction. Or like, as in, will people be able to use the, the street there or will they have to cross the road or how's that gonna look? Mm -hmm. I may uh, defer this to Mr. Gill, and then I may... yeah, I'm I'm just uh, trying to understand the question. Are you referring to the current uh, driveway on the uh, northeast uh, northwest corner of fifty three and two hundred? It's more for pedestrians um, for how they cross the road. Will they have to be doing any sort of double back things? Cross the road from uh, two hundred. So basically, for crossing. From on the if you're on the north side of 53rd, are you able to cross the street and then walk up or down, or do you have to do um, sort of an L? You're asking if the sidewalks are going to remain open during. Correct. Course. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was just. I can't share my screen to make sure that the answer that I'm providing is. Uh, you're talking about here this side. I'm talking about, yes, that sidewalk there. Yes. Uh, cool. Thank yeah. you. Okay. And then also, sorry, Mr. Gill, yeah. uh, and also continuing north. Uh, continue. Because there's a sidewalk there today. Will that be maintained during the construction? This one? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. No, if you're on the east side of 200th, uh, yes. So will that sidewalk still this be one. there? Yes. Uh, yes, actually, uh, if they... Their plan, construction plan requires using this. They have to come up with uh, some some uh, traffic management plan. We haven't heard anything yet from them. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's a very early stage, especially from the engineering perspective. We have to see what their uh, game plan is, and then we work with them. But yes, there will be always access for pedestrians one way or another. 
Thank you very much for that. Uh, that answers my questions. And just double checking again that there's no further comments from council. And seeing none, uh, may I have a mover and a seconder to close the public hearing? So that's moved by Councillor James and seconded by Councillor Mack. All in favor? Any opposed? It is carried unanimously. The public hearing is now closed. This bylaw will come forward for consideration of third reading at a future council meeting. So that is the end of the meeting.